we have the integral of 4x divided by, well, x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1 dx. First of all, the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator. The degree of the numerator, okay. It means that we have to break down our denominator and see what are we dealing with. So step one, write the denominator in factor form. Okay, here we have x cubed minus x squared minus x plus one. Let's see, here I can factor out x I get x, let me see, let me factor out x squared. Let us factor out x squared, then we end up with x minus 1. Between these two, I'm going to factor out negative sign. I get x minus 1. So between these two, I'm going to factor out x minus 1. I left with x squared minus 1. So this is x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Well, what do I have here? I have x minus 1 times x minus 1, which is x minus 1 squared. I have a linear expression raised to the second power times x plus 1. This is different from what we saw before. Previously, we had x times x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. They were different, independent linear expressions. Here you have two linear expressions. They're the same. They're repeated twice. So in step two, we need to solve this equation. What equation? So on the left hand side, you're going to copy whatever is given to you for x divided by x cubed minus x squared minus x plus one on the right hand side. So you don't have a problem with this linear expression. Whatever your linear expression is, its numerator is going to be a constant. This is a divided by x plus one. For this linear expression that is raised to the second power, you have to use this exponent and the exponent before it, the lower exponent, to create two fractions. Well, it's going to be plus b divided by x minus 1 plus c divided by x minus 1 squared. We're going to solve this equation. Note that for the linear term, we use a constant on top of it. For x minus 1 raised to second power, it's going to be b divided by x minus 1 plus c divided by x minus 1 squared. All of these are linear expressions, and this is a linear expression raised to the second power. Our job is to solve. For A, B, and C, repeat the exact same process to calculate A, B, C. Okay. Very well. So we have 4x divided by x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, if I take common denominator, it's going to be x plus 1 
times x minus 1 squared. This is the common denominator between these three. So a times, let's use these colors, a times x minus 1 squared plus b times x plus 1 times x minus 1 plus c times x plus 1 denominators are the same. I'm not worried about the denominators. The only thing that you care is setting the numerators equal to each other. So on the left, you have 4x, which is just a linear expression. It means that the coefficient of x squared and the constant are both zero. When you write 4x, it means that it is zero. x squared plus for x plus zero. This guy is equal to this expression here. So let's see. Here we have a times x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus b times x squared minus 1. plus c times x plus 1. So c and c. cx. So this guy is equal to ax squared minus 2ax plus a plus bx squared minus b plus cx plus c. Let's distribute a into parentheses. So if you factor out x squared, the coefficient is going to be a, b plus b, and that's it. This is for x squared. Now for x itself, if you factor out x, you get negative 2a plus c, and the constant is a, minus b plus c. Okay, so a plus b is zero. Negative 2a plus c is four. And your constant is also zero. Now we need to construct a system of linear equations and solve for A, B, and C. So we have A plus B equal to zero. Negative 2A plus C equals to four and a minus b plus c also zero. So this guy says b is negative a. This guy says c is four plus two a. We're going to just substitute everything, these two here in the last equation. So a plus a plus four plus two a, is zero, so for a is negative four, or a is negative one. A is negative one, it means that the b is one, and c is two. Negative one, one, and two. Well, now that we broke down this 
fraction into partial fractions, you can easily find the integral. So this guy is equal to the integral negative one over x plus one dx plus integral of one over x minus one dx plus integral of two divided by x minus one squared dx. This is negative ln of absolute value of x plus one plus ln of x minus one. And here you have minus two, one over x minus one plus c. Very well, suppose we have the following example. Suppose the question says, well, 